it was a long time ago yeah. when we first started Millennial Money. And I made the, my usual wise ass remark, only lazy people use their own money. And that's because I have spent much of my life raising capital. You know, today you have crowdfunding and all that stuff. But the reason I had to learn to raise money was because I had no money. And so if you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, in there, my, my rich dad always said, never say I can't afford it. And it was my rich dad and many of my teachers subsequent to that. They said, lazy people always say I can't afford it. I don't have the money. That's why they're poor. They have a poor mindset. So instead of figuring out how to raise money, it's just really easy to be a loser. And I call it losers. It pisses them off because we all have the power, if we wanted to, to not be poor if we learned how to raise money. So I hear, you know, and the reason I get upset, I still get hot like this. My poor dad, my poor, my PhD father, he always said to me, he says, you know, I'd be a rich man if I didn't have you kids. And I said, well, you know, dad, uh, it's not my fault you had kids, you know what I mean? You know, I just can't afford it because I have kids. And the more he said that, the angrier I got. So when I went, met my rich dad at age nine, you know, he says, well, that's why your old man's poor, because he's lazy. He thinks his PhD is gonna carry him. He says, everybody can say, I don't have money, I can't afford it. He says, that's why he's poor, he's lazy. But my father kept going back to school, you know, Stanford, University of Chicago, Northwestern. He never learned any of this stuff. They still don't know it because most teachers want a paycheck, pension, and tenure. They want job security. So the mindset is different, and that's what they teach the kids. Next, Robert tells us the number one phrase that keeps people poor. Now pause, I want you to leave a comment below if you know what it is. Don't cheat. So the reason I say only lazy people use their own money is because it takes much more intelligence to raise capital. And so I've never been able, ever since my rich dad, since a little boy, my rich dad forbade me from ever saying, I can't afford it. He says, figure out how you can afford it. How can you do something? Figure out how you can do something. So over my lifetime, most of the projects I, I've started, I've, I've never had any money. I, I like not having money because it forces me to think I get creative, I have to educate myself, I have to talk to rich guys, hey, how'd you do this, how'd you do that, how'd you do that? And what has happened to me, I mean, I just turned 72, I've never needed money. Because if I need money, I figure out how to raise it. So today you guys have crowdfunding and all that. I mean, I don't know what that stuff is. But it's easy to say I can't afford it. All the poor people say I can't afford it. All the poor people say, well, it's tax the rich. All the poor people are saying, well, give me a free education, free food, free schooling, free manicures, free pedicures. There's laziness, my opinion. One of my favorite things that Robert teaches is how your mindset can literally change everything. If you have an open mindset, you can really change your life. So Robert explains how his mindset changed how he invests. So, you know, over my lifetime, I've raised hundreds of millions of dollars. And it's because I don't have, I didn't have money as a young person that I learned how to raise capital. And, and, and it's really quite simple. You have to find an asset that's worth more than me. You know, if they can't invest in me because that's called slavery, you know, you know buy me, you know? So what I do is, you know, I started off, I write about it in fake. I started off looking for this one little piece of real estate. I found an excuse, you know, this one bedroom, one bath condominium on the beach in Maui. And I found an excuse for people to give me the money. All I had to do is assure them I'd pay them back. So my first deal was an infinite return deal. I had no money in the deal because it was 100% debt. It was an $18,000 condo. You can't touch them for that much anymore, but the economy was bad. So I buy this $18,000 condo, the guy wanted 10% down. You know, you don't need higher math. 10% of 18,000 is how much sports fans? $1,800. I could have used my money, I had the money, 
but that would be too easy. Robert tells us lazy people use their own money. Let's find out exactly what he means by this. Only lazy people use their own money. And that's what really pissed off a lot of people out there. Because you calling me lazy? I said, yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Because you're the same type of person who will say, I can't afford it. I can't do that. That's the problem. It's up here. It's, it's, it's the real estate between this ear and that ear. I can't do that. Most of my family say, oh, you, I can't afford it. My father taught him to say that. My mother taught him to say that. Mm -hmm. My rich dad said, never say that. Let me ask you this question. You know, you work for the rich dad company. How much of my money is in this company? Zero. 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 When using OPM, one question I had for Robert was what happens if the deal goes wrong? He answers by telling the story of one of his biggest mistakes. So the biggest mistake, so I was doing very well here. Mm -hmm. This is 1973, I started buying my first deal, and that was an $18,000 deal. $1,800 down, $25 a month, cash, cash flow. That was infinite. So I got, and then I, I kept doing that, I had a lot of property, and then I decided I'd go here. So my first business was a nylon and Velcro surfer wallet business. And um, it didn't sell. So you know, everybody knows what those wallets are today, but back then, this was 1974 or five. Yeah, 75. They didn't know what the wallets were. So we were going broke really fast. Mm -hmm. We bought 100,000 of these wallets in Korea. We shipped it to our warehouse in Long Island and we were borrowing money from our investors. So we raised about $600,000 to get this little goofy wallet business up. So I was in, we were in serious trouble. I owed my father about $200,000. My rich dad was laughing at me. We were going broke so quickly because we couldn't move the wallets, 100,000 of them. They were sitting in this bonded warehouse on Long Island and nobody would buy them from us. So then the good thing about Stupidity, there it is, makes you smarter. So I started thinking, we started thinking, so what's wrong? And I said, what was happening in the world at that time, all the baby boomers were fat, so they had to start running. So jogging was coming online. You know, and nobody jogged before, because, mm -hmm. you know, so these guys are all jogging, and then we're reading the paper, we're sitting in Honolulu going broke fast, and we're reading the paper, this jogger went to Golden Gate Park in San Francisco, and was jogging around the park. And what the jogger did was he had no place to put his car key. So what did they do? He puts it on the front tire of his car and goes for a jog around the park. So we're reading this newspaper. And voila, when he comes back to his car, the car wasn't there. Oh gosh. <laughs> so the guy says, they stole my car. Oh my goodness. And so the question was on the headline of the newspaper article, mm -hmm. what does a jogger do with their key? Mm -hmm. And so we sat there and said, oh my God, a problem, a problem. So with that, I designed the shoe pocket and you can see this picture right here. It's Playboy magazine. I mean, she's a nice looking young model with nothing on but a shoe pocket. <laughs> but anyway, so we were going broke so fast by then, but when that picture hit Playboy, mm -hmm. suddenly we were geniuses. And everybody started throwing their money at us. And all these products, our wallets were selling, our shoe pockets were selling, investors were happy, and the sales went through the roof. So we were extremely successful. So we went from risk, stupid, smarter, mm -hmm. successful. But the problem was, is how do we finance our inventory? Because the demand was worldwide, and we couldn't keep up with demand. So I borrowed another $100,000. And I went to my CPA, my, my CFO, Stanley. So I said, Stanley, will this $100,000 solve our inventory problem? He goes, yes, it will. So I gave Stanley the check and he ran off with it. Oh my goodness. I had no signed documentation I turned it over to. He said, I owed him the money. So that was one of my first, you know, six-figure, seven-figure mistakes. <sighs>
this is another question all of you flooded our comments with on YouTube and all of Robert's social media. It's, what advice do you have for millennials just starting out? Watch what Robert says. Well, number one is investing. Is invest in what you love. I love business. I love real estate. I mean, I really love it. I own this building here. And I love gold and silver. So I invest in what I love. Mm -hmm. Most people say, you know, and do what you love, but I'd rather invest in what I love. But I love being an entrepreneur. I love investing. It's like Shark Tank to me. I'm always looking at new businesses, new deals. It's, it's just a game like this. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look at the financial statement, that's like a scorecard. It's like a golf scorecard is your financial statement. But as you know, our schools teach us nothing about financial statements. Finally, we wrap up our discussion about OPM with Robert's final words for those of you that use the phrase, I can't afford it, as an excuse not to invest. But it goes back to the original question, um, why did I say only lazy people use their own money? Because lazy people always say, I can't afford it. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't do it. It's easy to say that. And that's why they're poor. Mm -hmm. It's harder to go raise a million dollars than to say, I can't afford it.